Today's video, we're exploring 15 amazing underground cities and facilities. These subterranean havens range from ancient dwellings carved into cliffs to modern marvels of engineering. We're gonna learn that there's an entire world built beneath our feet. Let's start with number 15, Nushabad. In Nushabad, just north of Kashan in Iran, the existence of an expansive underground city came to light about a decade ago when a local resident, unaware of the historical treasure beneath his feet, stumbled upon a tunnel while digging a sewage ditch in his home. The subterranean marvel known as Ui or Ui is a 1,500-year-old city located between 10 to 60 feet underground. Its intricate structure comprises three levels of tunnels, chambers, air ducts, staircases, canals, and strategic booby traps. Constructed during the Neo-Persian Empire's reign from about 224 to 651 AD, the underground city served as a refuge. Its purpose was to provide hiding spaces for women, children, and the elderly in the face of potential attacks by foreign invaders. The initial chambers, individually dug by inhabitants, evolved over time, merging into a complex network featuring air ducts, water pipes, storage areas, and even rudimentary toilets. This subterranean metropolis operated as a sustainable refuge during times of war. Families occupied individual rooms, each accessible through a tunnel resembling a hotel hallway. The amalgamation of chambers and the addition of essential amenities transformed this place into a functioning underground city that played a critical role in safeguarding its inhabitants during historical conflicts. The accidental discovery of this ancient marvel has shed light on a fascinating chapter in Iran's history. Number 14, Mesa Verde. Mesa Verde National Park. It's located in Montezuma County, Colorado. It's renowned for its dwellings of ancient peoples referred to as the Anasazi by archaeologists, a term derived from Navajo, meaning ancient enemy. This park has some of the world's most striking sandstone and adobe structures. It was constructed between the 12th and 13th centuries. The rectangular homes and circular subterranean religious structures known as kivas were built by the Pueblo peoples. The iconic Cliff Palace featuring 23 ceremonial kivas and numerous rooms stands as a masterpiece within the pink, yellow, and red plastered dwellings tucked behind windowless walls beneath a towering cliff. The architectural design strategically clusters dark rooms for defensibility, utilizing the natural curves of the cliffs. Despite the enchanting allure of Mesa Verde, very little is known about the builders of these structures. Two distinct styles and sizes of kivas suggest the possibility of two distinct building periods guided by different religious elites. The overall effect is pretty astonishing, especially for those accustomed to more open grid structured cities. Occupied for only a century or so, these dwellings faced an uncertain fate, with theories pointing to a possible mega drought, rendering life in the arid mesa lands unsustainable. However, the inhabitants did not vanish. Many tribes in Arizona, New Mexico, and near Mesa Verde have ancestral connections to these cliff dwellings, with the early Puebloan peoples migrating south and continuing their building practices. Unfortunately, many of the remarkable abandoned structures fell victim to looting and vandalism. The Weatherill family, forward-thinking ranchers with positive relations with local Native Americans, played a critical role in preserving what remains today. President Teddy Roosevelt's efforts in 1906 aimed to protect the parklands, and photographer Ansel Adams documented the ruins in the 1940s, producing powerful black-and-white images that captured the essence of the towers and the walls. Number 13. Petra if you love the adventures of old Indiana Jones, then you'll know all about this entry. Petra it was constructed between 1550 and 1292 BCE as the capital city for the Nabataeans. A Semitic people remained undiscovered by the modern Western world until 1812, and today it stands as one of the most astonishing wonders of the ancient world. Postcard images showcasing the treasury, the monastery, and the water channels in the Sikh only provide a glimpse of the wonders awaiting those who experience Petra in person. The approach, either on foot, horse, or carriage, takes nearly an hour, leading visitors through a landscape dominated by towering convoluted rocks and featuring hundreds of monumental geological tombs extending for miles. The Seek, translating to shaft, serves as the narrow gorge entrance to Petra. Now, before entering, scattered rock tombs with vivid sandstone cubicle forms and cliff faces sculpted smooth with bas-relief motifs offer a preview. As you traverse the Seek, a canyon as narrow, high, and as extravagant as the slot canyons in the American Southwest, ancient water channels carved along the cliff curve showcase brilliant hydrology for agriculture and water provision. Petra's architectural elements gradually reveal themselves, from worn niches to a realistically sculpted man leading camels, just larger than life-size. 
Upon reaching the treasury at the end of the seek, the scale is overwhelming, with the pink, well-preserved structures towering above. Inside, the vast entrance forms a perfect cube of space inside the mountain, with a horizontal ceiling of 50 by 50 feet. The revelation of the treasury continues into Petra, unfolding into a necropolis of massive tombs crowding the widening canyon. The once-living metropolitan area for over 30,000 people emerges, with grand tombs reaching up to the mountainsides, creating a teeming, almost overpopulated necropolis. Number 12. Cappadocia Situated in the Nevshahir province of Turkey's central Anatolian region, Cappadocia stands as a landscape where entire cities have been intricately carved into the rock. The area, rich in history and spanning numerous centuries, presents a surreal vista resembling an abandoned alien desert. Fields frozen in time mimic waves, while rocky spikes and spires emerge like a meringue set in stone. The rock formations defining the unique topography originated from volcanic eruptions, erosion, and the wind. Over three million years ago, volcanic ash covered the 1,500-square-mile landscape, solidifying into a soft rock. Erosion and time sculpted this rock into breathtaking forms, complementing the area's compelling human history. The malleable rock allowed for the creation of homes complete with windows, bedrooms, kitchens, and multiple stories, carved into every hillside, spire, and boulder. Beyond the remarkable geological features, the rock holds a history of struggle and resistance. Dating back to the 3rd century, Christians sought refuge in the caves and tunnels to escape Roman persecution. In the 10th and 11th centuries, Byzantine Christian monks constructed hundreds of intricately painted churches as monasteries and training grounds for missionaries. The ingenious ancient architecture and the pliability of the landscape become strikingly visible in the nearby subterranean cities of Derinkuyu and Kemakli. Darren Kuyu, 11 stories deep with extensive tunnels connecting to other underground cities, could accommodate thousands of people. Serving as a genuine underground city, it featured sleeping areas, stables, cooking pits, bathrooms, prayer spaces, and even burial sites, with eroded tops revealing narrow, empty graves. To this day, Cappadocia holds approximately 200 discovered underground structures, interconnected all by tunnels. Number 11. Disha Chang Born out of nuclear fears, Beijing's underground city, Desha Chang, unfolds as a labyrinth of arched hospital-white corridors, teeming with debris, empty iron bed frames, rotting vegetables, and intrigued visitors. This subterranean realm composes a network of tunnels and chambers spanning 33 square miles beneath Beijing, aptly nicknamed the Underground Great Wall due to its vastness and military purpose. Dug by hand by local citizens throughout the 1970s, the tunnel complex was designed as a shelter for protection during invasions, air raids, or nuclear attacks. More than 90 concealed entrances were strategically placed behind homes and businesses during its peak readiness. Beyond mere functionality, it harbored a world within its depths. Classrooms catered to children and recreational amenities like movie theaters, barber shops, restaurants, and even a roller skating rink awaited potential refugees. Auxiliary tunnels stored essential supplies, including grain and weapons, while areas were designated for growing sunless crops like mushrooms, and wells were prepared for drilling. Though the massive bomb shelter never served its intended purpose, it remained shrouded in obscurity until 2000, when portions of the tunnel were open for tourism. Currently closed for renovation since 2008, only a fraction of the complex is accessible for tours, while some areas have seen the emergence of businesses. The official tour traces a small circular stretch where murals depict locals volunteering to dig the tunnels alongside fading slogans such as Dig Deep, Store Grain, Don't Claim to Be an Emperor, and For the People, Prepare for War, Prepare for Famine. Di Sha Chiang, a honeycomb of communist paranoia, provides a unique glimpse into a bygone era of nuclear anxieties and preparedness, awaiting the day it reopens for visitors seeking refuge from the ordinary Beijing tourist spots. Number 10. The Tunnels of the Moose Jaws The tunnels beneath Moose Jaw offers two tour attractions, Passage to Fortune and the Chicago Connection. Set in 1907, Passage to Fortune narrates a fictionalized tale of early Chinese-Canadian settlers compelled to seek refuge underground in Moose Jaw. While many visitors perceive the tour as historically accurate, there is no substantiated evidence supporting the notion that Chinese Canadians inhabited these tunnels, apart from minimal anecdotal testimonies. The tour incorporates historically accurate information about the Chinese Exclusion Act, Chinese head tax, and the Quanwang VR case at 1 Main Street, located above the tunnels. 
However, Passage to Fortune also disseminates some misinformation, as tour attendees are referred to as coolies and led through the tunnels, depicting Chinese workers indentured to a fictional laundry owner, Mr. Burroughs. In reality, early Chinese Canadians were often proprietors of their own laundries, engaging in this labor-intensive industry due to prejudice barring them from other professions. In 1890, Moose Jaw saw the opening of its first Chinese business, a Chinese laundry, and by 1908 the city directory listed nine laundries, with eight notably operated by Chinese entrepreneurs. During Prohibition in the 1920s, the tunnels soon found a new purpose as rum runners utilized them to store and clandestinely transport alcohol to the Sioux Line Railroad, which smuggled the liquor into the U.S. Over time, functional speakeasies emerged beneath the streets. Persistent rumors suggest Al Capone's involvement in the local bootlegging industry, with anecdotes hinting at his brief residence in Moose Jaw to evade law enforcement, although concrete evidence remains elusive on that. Number 9. The Pilsen Historical Underground Dug between the 13th and 19th centuries, the Pilsen Historical Underground forms one of Central Europe's longest tunnel networks, originally designed for storage, water transport, and sewage. Now an integral part of the city's rich beer brewing history, Pilsen in Czechia is now renowned as the birthplace of the globally acclaimed Pilsner beer variety, with an equally significant industrial past. As early as the 13th century, Pilsen residents began creating multi-story cellars beneath their homes, interconnected by a network of tunnels. Now, Initially, they were used for food and supply storage, including a substantial quantity of beer due to Pilsen's long-standing brewing tradition. These tunnels evolved over to accommodate waste disposal, water storage, and transport. The expansive tunnel system stretching over 12 miles culminated in one of Chechia's most advanced sewer systems during that era. Over time, the tunnels fell into disuse, gaining archaeological significance as researchers uncovered medieval artifacts buried in the refuse that once filled the dry wells. Today, visitors can explore a substantial length of the tunnels, with certain sections recreated to depict their original appearance during their prime. Notable features include a replica water wheel and an exhibit on medieval bookbinding, providing a fascinating glimpse into Pilsen's historic subterranean infrastructure and its beer-centric legacy. Number 8. Metropolitan Area Outer Underground Discharge Channel So Japan has faced centuries of flooding, but Tokyo's modern flood management systems took shape in the post-war years, spurred on by devastating events like Typhoon Kathleen in 1947 and Typhoon Kanagawa a decade later. These disasters prompted increased government investment, resulting in Tokyo's comprehensive flood defense infrastructure. The city planners must contend with various flood scenarios, including heavy rain upstream, causing river overflow, localized drainage system failures during intense city downpours, and threats from high tides, tsunamis, or earthquake-induced dam or levee destruction. Decades of planning and construction have transformed Tokyo into a city equipped with numerous dams, reservoirs, and levees. An underground network of tunnels and structures reminiscent of a birthday cake's layers runs alongside the subway lines and gas pipelines. One remarkable feat of engineering is the Metropolitan Area Outer Underground Discharge Channel, a $2 billion project completed in 2006. This facility, often referred to as the Floodwater Cathedral, is the world's largest diversion floodwater facility. It's composed of five colossal, hundred-foot-tall cylindrical tanks connected by a four-mile network of tunnels. When rivers overflow, water is directed to these tanks, each large enough to accommodate a space shuttle or the Statue of Liberty. As the water nears the Edo River, the Floodwater Cathedral adjusts its flow, allowing pumps to redirect the water into the river. To illustrate the discharge channel's potency, a mental exercise envisions a standard 25-meter pool being emptied in mere seconds by these pumps. However, challenges loom as changing rainfall patterns due to climate change threaten Tokyo's infrastructure. Historical records guided Tokyo's defenses against up to 50 millimeters of rain per hour, but in recent years, heavy precipitation days signal changing patterns. Estimates suggest a potential 10% increase in rainfall in Japan over the 21st century, rising to 19% in the summer. While the Tokyo Metropolitan Government Bureau of Construction claims awareness of these shifts and has adjusted rainfall criteria in some areas, experts like Nobuyuki Tsushia, a former chief civil engineer, argue that authorities are procrastinating in taking decisive action to address these evolving challenges. Moving on to number 7, Chen Shi Huang's Mausoleum. The Qin Tomb, nestled near the ancient capital of Chang'an, 
Now close to modern-day Xi'an stands as a monumental Chinese archaeological marvel. The site houses the eternal resting place of Xing Huangdi, the first emperor of the Qin Dynasty, a visionary who unified China, initiated the construction of the Great Wall, and orchestrated a grand 20-square-mile funerary complex. It took over two millennia for the treasures within this compound to see the light of day. In 1974, a group of farmers drilling a well stumbled upon a subterranean chamber, unraveling an astonishing army of 8,000 life-size terracotta soldiers. Crafted with individualized faces, these warriors were accompanied by chariots, iron farm tools, bronze and leather bridles, and a cache of items ranging from silk and linen to jade and bone. Weapons cast from a unique 13-element alloy maintained a sharp gleam even after more than two millennia. The terracotta figures, once adorned with vivid mineral colors, were strategically arranged in military formations, adhering to the tactics of the time. Beyond the warriors, three additional chambers were unearthed, revealing ceramic figures representing foot soldiers, chariots, and a cavalry. An elite command unit consisting of 68 members and an empty chamber added to the intrigue. The site, known as the Museum of Chin Figures, shelters these archaeological wonders under protective roofing, allowing visitors to marvel at the meticulous preservation efforts. Facing east and stationed about three-quarters of a mile from the tomb's outer wall, the buried army stands poised for battle, guarding against former adversaries. Nearby pits reveal remnants of human remains, a subterranean stable with horse skeletons, half-sized bronze chariots, individual burial sites, and even a zoo for exotic animals. Constructed over 36 years by around 700,000 conscripted workers, this underground palace is said to be laden with fine vessels, precious stones, and intricate rarities, and it finally became a UNESCO World Heritage site in 1987. Number 6. The Rumu Underwater Prison If you can't do the time, then don't do the crime. This entry dives beneath the surface of that notion. In the small Estonian town of Rumu, a peculiar transformation has turned a once-feared Soviet prison camp into an unexpected tourist attraction. Established in the 1940s, the stone edifice perched on the edge of a limestone quarry served as a grim labor prison where inmates once toiled under oppressive conditions. Little did they know that this site of suffering would eventually undergo a bizarre metamorphosis. Following Estonia's independence in 1991, the Soviet institutions, including the labor prison at Rumu, were abandoned. These seemingly impervious prison walls, once symbols of oppression, succumbed to the passage of time. With no one to manage the natural groundwater seeping into the abandoned quarry, a remarkable and swift transformation unfolded. The former quarry, once a site of forced labor, began to fill with water at an astonishing rate, creating an entirely new lake. The rapid inundation submerged mining machines and even some prison structures beneath the rising waters. Today, the ruins of abandoned prison camp have become a unique and captivating destination. The submerged remnants, including parts of the prison structure, attracts divers and adventurous beachgoers. Number 5. Subtropolis Delving into the depths of efficiency, Subtropolis emerges as an underground marvel, a colossal 55 million square foot space redefining the concept of storage and business ops. Existing deep within the earth along the Missouri River, Subtropolis began as a mining venture in the 1940s. However, by 1960, its visionary owners recognized its potential, transforming it into the world's largest underground business complex. This subterranean city, trademarked by Hunt Midwest, boasts nearly seven miles of well-lit paved roads, accommodating the seamless movement of semi-trucks through its tunnels. Carved into the Bethany Falls limestone mine, Subtropolis extends up to 160 feet beneath the surface. Its network is composed of 16-foot-high, 40-foot-wide tunnels separated by 25-foot-square limestone pillars. Maintaining a consistent temperature between 65 and 70 degrees Fahrenheit year-round, Subtropolis offers an ideal environment for a myriad of storage needs. The United States Postal Service and United States Environmental Protection Agency, the National Archives and Records Administration have all secured spaces within this expanse. From a USPS collection of millions of postal stamps to the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency's Region 7 Training and Logistics Center, Subtropolis serves as a guardian of diverse treasures. On the surface, Hunt Midwest has extended its vision to create the Worlds of Fun and Oceans of Fun amusement park complex, showcasing the versatility of their endeavors. Subtropolis stands as a beacon of ingenuity, from mushroom farming to secure storage for entities like Corbis and the U.S. federal government. In this subterranean expanse, the caverns of Subtropolis echo with the hum of efficient industry, embodying the limitless potential beneath our feet.
Number 4. The Burlington Bunker Beneath the picturesque market town of Corsham in Wiltshire, England, lies a clandestine world shrouded in secrecy, a 35-acre subterranean marvel known as the Burlington Nuclear Bunker. Emerging from the depths of the Cold War era, this bomb-proof, radiation-proof, and poison-gas-proof underground city was strategically nestled within the labyrinthine limestone caves beneath the town. Constructed in the late 1950s, Burlington was the UK's covert refuge designed to shelter up to 4,000 central government personnel in the grim event of a nuclear strike. This colossal underground complex stretching over a mile in length with 60 miles of roads was more than a mere bunker. It was a self-sustaining city, carefully designed to endure complete isolation for a minimum of three months. In the heart of Corsham's subterranean realms, offices, laundries, supply store rooms, a hospital, cafeterias, kitchens, and even a television studio where the government could address the public, they all seamlessly coexisted. Beyond its utilitarian purpose, Burlington embraced a touch of whimsy, adorned with murals by artist Olga Lehmann, depicting diverse scenes from the circus and prehistoric monsters to sailors of yore and mermaids. The underground city, which ran on colossal generators and had over 100,000 lights, it was even rumored to have a pub named the Rose and Crown, remained a fascinating enigma. Conflicting reports persist about the existence of this subterranean pub, though. Ensuring the safety of dignitaries, Burlington incorporated a secret rail line connecting to the main London to Bristol Railway, intended for the escape of English royalty to this covert city. Kept in utmost secrecy until its decommissioning in 2004, Burlington was never utilized. Today, though, remnants of government-issued glass ashtrays, lavatory brushes, and civil service tea sets lay untouched. Number 3. The Sanford Underground Research Facility Welcome to the Sanford Underground Research Facility, the underground wonderland nestled in Leeds, South Dakota, home to some of the coolest experiments you can find beneath the Earth's surface. Imagine a subterranean laboratory, the deepest of its kind in the U.S., playing host to an array of mind-bending projects spanning dark matter and neutrino physics to biology, geology, and engineering. With 28 active research projects currently underway, SURF is the go-to spot for scientists who want to escape the relentless cosmic radiation bombardment from the sun, thanks to its depth, rock stability, and intriguing history. Housed within the former Homestake gold mine, SURF spans a whopping 223 acres on the surface and a mind-blowing 7,700 acres underground, yeah, 7,700 acres of underground awesomeness. Homestake, the mine that keeps on giving, carved out over 370 miles of underground shafts, drifts, ramps, of which Sanford Lab maintains a cool 12 miles for scientific shenanigans. All right, now let's talk experiments. Surf kicked things off with a bang on the 4850 level, hosting the large underground xenon experiment and the Majorana demonstrator experiment. Lux, residing in the same cavern as Ray Davis's 1960 experiment, rocked the world by becoming the most sensitive dark matter detector after an 80 day run in 2013. Meanwhile, the Majorana experiment is on the hunt for the elusive neutrinoless double beta decay. This is a rare radioactive decay that could unveil the mysteries of neutrinos. Zooming into the underground campuses, the Davis Campus and the Ross Campus, you'll discover the Davis Cavern, a revamped space that once housed Dr. Raymond Davis Jr.'s solar neutrino experiment. Now, it's a cutting-edge setup featuring a massive 72,000-gallon water tank for cosmic radiation shielding, a water deionization system, a clean room, and a control room for researchers. In essence, SURF is where science meets the underground, and it's all happening beneath the surface in the coolest lab you never knew existed. Number 2. Wright-Patterson Air Force Base Wright Pad Air Force Base, a strategic United States Air Force installation in Ohio, carries an air of mystery, especially surrounding its notorious underground facility, Hangar 18. This base, located just east of Dayton, Ohio, encompasses both Wright and Patterson Fields, originally known as Wilbur Wright Field and the Fairfield Aviation General Supply Depot. Now, positioned strategically about 10 miles northeast of Dayton, Patterson Field is complemented by Wright Field, situated some five miles northeast of the city. A compelling tale woven into the fabric of American folklore is the infamous UFO incident near Roswell, New Mexico on July 2, 1947. Now, according to widespread belief, an unidentified flying object and its extraterrestrial occupants crash-landed in the New Mexico desert. Eyewitness accounts described three-foot-tall, gray-skinned aliens perishing in the crash. 
The remnants of the spacecraft and its otherworldly occupants purportedly found their way to Hangar 18 at Wright Pat Base. Now, the allure of Hangar 18's secrets reached such heights that even Senator Barry Goldwater sought access. Allegedly, he approached the United States Air Force General Curtis LeMay, only to be curtly informed that not only could he not gain entry, but he was also advised to never inquire again. This mysterious hangar, shrouded in secrecy, it became a focal point for those intrigued by the extraterrestrial. Now, adjacent to Wright Pat Base lies the Wright State University, equipped with a practical underground tunnel system spanning nearly two miles. This network facilitates students and faculty traversing between classes shielded from the elements. Now, the narrative of the alien encounters and UFO crashes doesn't really end with Roswell, at least according to some accounts. Rumors persist of additional extraterrestrial crashes, some predating 1952 with the debris and blue-green skin pilots purportedly finding their way to Wright Pat. In one alleged incident, as many as 16 alien bodies were recovered from the wreckage, adding a layer of speculation to the base's clandestine activities. The echoes of mystery surrounding Wright-Patterson Air Force Base continue to reverberate, with Hangar 18 symbolizing an elusive realm that's captured the imaginations of many, and it's given Americans something fun to ponder about for decades. Number 1. Vivos in the middle of global fears surrounding the much-deserved apocalypse predicted for December 21, 2012 and other potential cataclysmic events, Robert Vincino, the visionary founder of the Vivos Group, had conceived a one-of-a-kind solution, a nationwide network of privately co-owned, comfortable, and long-term autonomous underground bunkers. Now, the first phase of this ambitious project has already commenced with the construction of an underground complex near Barstow, California, designed to withstand an array of apocalyptic scenarios. These subterranean sanctuaries engineered by the Vivos Group have an impressive list of survival features. They're nuclear blast-proof, capable of enduring surface temperatures reaching a scorching 1200 degrees Fahrenheit for a staggering 10 days. The structural integrity extends to withstanding a Force 10 magnitude earthquake, water submersion for up to 500 hours, winds roaring at over 400 miles an hour, and protection against radiation, biological or chemical attacks, and lots more. Now, notably, the shelters are also fortified to resist the impact of 90-pound hailstones, traveling at the breakneck speed of 100 miles an hour. And in a dystopian twist, these underground complexes can transform into fortified strongholds in the face of social anarchy. Now, they're designed to accommodate about 200 people. Each individual is allotted approximately 100 square feet, ensuring both comfort and functionality. And these shelters are meticulously stocked with essentials to sustain occupants for a full year, encompassing a diverse array of provisions such as food, clothing, medicine, fuel, water, and survival gear. Vivos envisions the creation of 20 shelters strategically positioned across the nation, all within 200 miles of major metropolitan areas. While the cumulative capacity of these shelters is an impressive 4,000 people, Vincino articulates a broader vision. His shelters are promoted as modern-day Noah's Arks, fostering a cross-section of individuals from diverse backgrounds, ages, religions, and professional skills to enhance collective survival prospects. In a unique twist, Vivos is encouraging universities to contribute DNA samples encompassing quote-unquote every living thing on Earth, which will be securely stored in refrigerated vaults within these bunkers. I guess this Dr. Evil-esque approach aims to create a resilient and rich community, poised to confront an uncertain future together. That is, as long as you can afford the price tag. And if you shell out all that cash and never need to take cover, well, tough luck. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time. Thank you to our channel members.